Okay, coming back to the second um, video in the middle adulthood uh, week. So um, we um, are changing in our roles in our families. So children are becoming adolescents or emerging adults. Um, so there is some separation between um, parents and child in, in that relationship, um, new independence, um, and because of this, um, middle adults may be refocusing on their work or their marriage. Um, also, um, there's, we start to see middle adults um, uh, to uh, start to take care of their own parents as they are aging. So that's a new different kind of caregiver role that um, folks in the middle adulthood may have to take on. Okay, so again, um, as young adults create their own families, um, their relationships to their parents change and their parents become grandparents. Um, this can be a smooth role, this can be a tough role. Um, young adults um, and their parents have to renegotiate what these roles are and they may be different from the roles that their parents had with their parents. So um, it uh, is a negotiation for sure. So um, the, we're going to talk a little bit more about roles in middle childhood and um, and in this area, age um, our social roles are renegotiated so middle adults become caregivers for their parents. Um, their role as a parent to their own children changes. Um, they may have a change in their relationship with their significant other with their partner. Um, and um, they may become a grandparent, they also may retire. So um, many middle-aged uh, caregivers become, or middle-aged adults become caregivers for their parents. This is my stepdad, Dennis, with his mom, um, Maxine, who is now passed. Um, uh, women often do the caregiving role um, more than men. Um, because we socialize women to be caregivers. Um, and how um, this caregiving, what this caregiving looks like varies a lot across cultures. Um, so in some uh, cultures, it is common for um, older adults to live in the house with their uh, children. Um, in some uh, cultures, that is uh, not the case. Um, so. Caregiving for your parents is really difficult. This is a really hard role transition for a lot of people. Um, one of my former students actually in this class um, said it nicely um, by saying, um, my mom is like one of the kids now. Um, her mom had dementia. My mom is like one of the kids now, um, but she still sees me as her child and wants to be treated as my mother. So needing to shop for the mom, needing to make sure mom had her meds, make, needing to um, you know, look after some of the activities of daily living or the, the necessary things that one has to do um, to be well um, and make it through the day. But at the same time, um, the mom uh, remembers and is holding on to the role of mother and doesn't like to be um, talked down to or wants to be deferred to in terms of choices, et cetera. Um, uh, one of the things that's true about caregivers across um, age groups, but we see this a lot in um, middle-aged adults who are caregiving for their parents, is that um, they often neglect their own health when caring for other people. Um, caregivers show higher rates of depression than others. Um, and we also have this new, um, more common thing in the last uh, 50 to 100 years um, of uh, what we call the sandwich generation or adults who are caregiving for their parents, but also their own children at the same time. Um, another changing role may be um, par caregivers um, who are um, our parents uh, changing in their relationship with their own children. So um, uh, parents having to um, uh, what we've called uh, empty nest. So the children are leaving, um, they're maybe asking for more independence in their relationship from their parents. Um, and uh, research suggests that empty nest um, uh, syndrome or the uh, feeling of lonesome loneliness and not 
um, knowing what to do with yourself and being uh, kind of uh, str struggling to find purpose um, is different across um, cultures. Um, so some uh, uh, parents in some cultures experience this more than in others. Um, in um, so, uh, however, these parent-child relationships continue to stay strong um, in uh, healthy families across uh, people's lifetime. Um, and um, so it's not that the attachment or the relationship between parent and child goes away, um, but instead that it changes over time. Um, so uh, there's uh, differences in proximity, um, but um, so while we may not be in this, living in the same house, um, uh, parents and children still often stay in um, relational and communicative um, uh, vicinity, so they often still communicate frequently. All right, so also looking at um, partnership and marriage in middle age. So some researchers um, have uh, argued that um, in midlife, uh, men and women, uh, gender roles change. Um, so when um, folks are not, um, no longer in uh, young adulthood, no longer building their family um, in that kind of way, um, we often start to see, and especially as folks are getting older, um, we start to see um, men and women trading some um, traditional roles. So women taking the lead in money management um, or taking on second careers um, where their spouses um, who are male um, retire, um, guys taking on more caregiving, cooking, cleaning roles um, as uh, for their older parents or two grandchildren. We're gonna stop here and we'll come back. I'll discipline this puppy um, and I'll uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about um, marriages, um, some biological and um, cognitive changes in middle life.